place in the heart of Kalkala. The place where everyone goes for shopping. My name is Augustus Nwagawa and I'm a managing consultant for Reef Concept International. We established this farm about 10 years ago and we have been doing a lot of work uh, in the African region to be able to, to, to build the capacity of these African uh, countries in the areas of budget performance, uh, macroeconomic policy management and also building social policy and also trying to help these countries to, to, to implement their programs. I'm also a, a teacher in Makerere for quite uh, 20 years now and we have been training Ugandans to be able to, to develop capacities and help uh, both their communities, their governments and, the, and, the, and the Africa in general to, to increase uh, competitiveness of individuals, competitiveness of communities and also to be able to contribute significantly to the development of Uganda as, as a country in the region now East Africa region and also in the African region generally. So, we have had problems of the global financial crisis, but because Uganda is not very much integrated in the global economic system, we do not suffer quite a lot like many countries in, 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 in Europe and North America have suffered. But also we need to recognize the, the robustness of the Uganda's economy in the sense that there has been a significant and very good macroeconomic policy management. This has been uh, manifested in the areas of control of inflation, in the areas of management of fiscal deficit, in the, in the management of, of interest rates, of course, uh, these ones which remain very high, and, and generally in the, in the control and performance of the financial sector. And because of this very good macro policy environment, uh, the, the, the benefits of these have tripled down, and the major uh, implication to this has been growth in, in investments, both domestic and foreign direct investment, which actually has been domestic investment has been growing at, at about 5% uh, for the last few years. And so we can generally say that the, the, the macro policy environment, because of very good management of the macroeconomic variables, the economy has been very healthy and we, we, we really want to, to recognize uh, the, the need to, to attract those who are, who, are, who are willing to invest, particularly the, the, the Ugandans in the diaspora, the, the environment is, is now really conducive for, for investment in the areas of agriculture, in the areas of financial services, in the areas of, of telecommunications, in the areas of, 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 of agro business uh, management processing. Uh, now we are going to oil in, in, in the area of oil and gas uh, industry. The economy is, is growing in all of these areas and provides a conducive environment for anybody who wants to face uh, One of the problems that we face uh, in Uganda currently is, is the, the question of what we call green green. Of course this uh, is not good because the country then loses the professionals, it loses most of the people who will be assisting uh, to, to, to stimulate growth. So what the government needs to do here is to increase more uh, stimuli in the economy to be able to attract uh, most of these people and these people need to come of course with their, their money and invest uh, in this process. Countries that have transformed, uh, particularly in the, in the East Asian Tigers, if you look at Malaysia, look at, at, at uh, Singapore, and in recent in Africa, if you look at the country like Mauritius, these countries have all invested in what you call taking very high risk for investment in people. They have invested in their people. And what have they done? Well, mainly they have concentrated on, on, on building the human capital base, and the human st uh, capital stock, the, the professionals. And if you take, for example, Mauritius, Mauritius under its uh, very famous uh, flagship uh, planning approach, they have over the years invested very significantly in human resource and what has uh, happened is that Mauritius now as we speak is, is, is one of the, the best countries in Africa in the medium development category. With a very very high human development index of more than 0.8 so we need to focus resources in areas 
that have the highest molecular effects, areas that have the highest benefits, which benefits again can provide tremendous impact on quite a number of other sectors. And if you could ask me in Uganda's case, these are uh, sectors of agriculture, which would really have the highest quality for over 80% of the population. Then you have uh, infrastructure, particularly in, uh, the energy sector, because we have tremendous resources and it would be a very big uh, problem to harness those. And then you have uh, uh, a sector like education which is a must put the greatest human resource. So if you take those three sectors and flag them, then these sectors can, it can eventually impact on any other sectors that you want to, to, to develop. So you need to, to, to develop clearly and, 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 and focus the resources on very few areas where you can have uh, impact rather than spreading now thin all the resources you have as we did in the last poverty education action plan from 1997 and then you are not getting the results. So the, the evaluation of the poverty education action plan clearly indicated that one of the, the major impediments in the realization of the expected benefits from the people were mainly two. One of them was that resources were thinly spread over 35 interventions. You can see, and then eventually, of course, every sector received very little and there was no much impact. And the second factor was of course, lack of coordination, uh, monitoring, and inspecting the function of government. So we need also to ensure that you are monitoring, you are, you are, you are uh, putting resources where they're supposed to, and these resources are getting the, the results which are expected. So the, therefore, this also means that the, the government needs to put more emphasis on monitoring, on inspecting, so that the results and the, the resources are being used in the way in which it was supposed to be used, in the way in which it was planned. Now, the, the, there is an interesting example coming these days from countries that have invested in, 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 in people. And if you look at Malaysia, for example, Malaysia is one of the countries in the world, first country in the world, that currently has what we call a demographic gift. This is the gift you, the country gains from the, the, the benefits of having very, very high level uh, human capital. And if you are in North America, these are the people who get the green card the first. Why? Because they have much more to put to, 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 to American economy in terms of financial services, in terms of, of ICT, in terms of management and business. So these people earn a great uh, 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 significant, significant amount of money and the, the, the rate of, of capital inflow to, to countries as a result of the people working in the diaspora. Malaysia, of course, beats everyone, and the reason is the, the people, the Malaysians that are working in, in other countries, earn relatively high amounts relative to other people because if you consider in Uganda what we are earning, uh, which is, by the way, now the highest uh, foreign exchange earn of about $1.2 uh, billion per year before the financial crisis, is it, it, tremendous. But if you compare it with the countries like Malaysia, it is Malaysia is extremely high, and the reason is that because of their professionals being uh, people who are wanted in these countries, you find that they are really the rate of return uh, back home is extremely high, and this has contributed significantly to the, the economy of Malaysia. That, that, that these countries, the, the, the Tiger, have done a, a tremendous way, not because they have been thinking better or they have better resources and, and, and so on, but they have been able to, to do one thing and this is linking their plans with resource allocation and also with the correct priorities, particularly with bearing in mind the international uh, economic environment. And they have perfectly mastered this, particularly uh, China, uh, Singapore, Malaysia and then a few countries now in Africa, particularly led by Mauritius. They have know their, their plans, what they want to do, they, they do the collective budget and resource allocation, and they achieve the, the results, which are the best results that they really plan to achieve, and which fit in what the global economy exactly wants. For us uh, in River Concert, what we are doing now is that we, we establish this consultancy firm uh, to help African governments, and we work with very many of them uh, in the region, to be able to, to, to help governments to create capacities 
in the areas of planning, in the areas of policy analysis, and then implementation of programs such that the, 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 the countries can be equipped properly to plan, to implement the, the, the plans, implement the budgets, and then they get the kind of results that they would want to feed and also feed back into the, 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 the both the economic and the development process of this country. And we are, we are very happy that we are helping the government here. We work with the government here. We have helped the government in a number of areas, particularly in the areas of policy and formulation, in the areas of program design and implementation, and also in the areas of capacity building to ensure that uh, these uh, plans, which are both activity and strategic, can link with the budgets, and then the budgets can perform to derive the kind of benefits that the country would like to do. The only, of course, problems this which we still have is that uh, the, the, the most, most of the, 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 the public sector management still has gaps in the area of, particularly of monitoring and implementation. And so what you have are programs which do not uh, fit into what government would have wanted to do, simply because of, of still a lot of gaps in the public sector uh, management, but these are gaps again which can be identified at that field.